Okay, we're back from the break, and uh, we have our special guest on the show, Dr. Michael Jonak, uh, who has uh, graciously joined us for the last segment. And I wanted to say that, again, now you are another independent practitioner in town uh, because you are no longer working for healthcare partners, and uh, you get to join the ranks of the uh, independent group. And uh, I think that best suits you because you are... I mean, as we were talking at the break, your best skill is being able to listen to the patients. I mean, that is your one of the things that, that I think separates uh, independent practitioners is they're working for the patient. Uh, and um, I think that's a very noble, noble thing. Well, uh, that's why we went to medical school, to talk to people, to help them. It's uh, pretty straightforward, actually. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've gotten away from. Mm -hmm. uh, in modern medicine, 21st century medicine is is over specialized, and and uh, we're trying to bring back the basics of medical care. Yeah, you see house calls coming back. You see a lot of personal services coming back as the pendulum swings one way, then it comes back uh, the other way. I think we have Ray on the phone, Ray. Yes, Doc. I have a question for Dr. Jonak. I uh, heard you mention that he works in the, the jails, or at least has. I just saw a case in uh, in Knight County Jail today where a fellow was bitten by a brown recluse spider. Serious problems. I was wondering if there's a problem with the brown recluse in the jails, and if there is, what can be done about it? I appreciate uh, any input on this one. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're welcome. Uh, uh... Spider bites are, are ever present in Nevada, whether you're in the jail or at home. Or uh, I no, I'm not aware that there was uh, ever a problem in the jail. It's a very, uh, it's it's a new facility. It's well run, well staffed, uh, well staffed. Meaning that the deputies do a very good job uh, with uh, what resources they have to work with. Uh, no, I'm not aware that there is a uh, there is a particular problem with. Uh, I, I had heard about that uh, particular instance, although uh, supposedly brown recluse spiders aren't supposed to be out here. But well, I, I think there's a version of the brown recluse that the southern brown recluse that that is not out here, but there is a variant thereof. But one of the things that I've seen a lot is that people say there are spider bites, and it's not really a spider bite. It's an MRSA. It's a methicillin-resistant staph infection that they get um, because uh, a, a true brown recluse bite is probably the ugliest thing you'll ever see in your life because the, the central area necrosis, and but a severe staph infection can almost mimic a brown recluse bite. And one of the things that is very, I mean, I find very, I've talked about it before, is that you see all these hand sanitizers out there. And I see people that use hand sanitizers too much. They're actually killing all the good bacteria on their skin. They're selecting for resistant bacteria. And so eventually they rub their face or they shave or they, they get a break in their skin. And now you've got an opportunistic infection with the resistant bacteria. And uh, I've seen it in two cases. One was a lady I worked out in front sight, and she was so afraid of the um, dust that was on there, all the ammo cans that she was moving. She was using all that, and she couldn't understand why she was getting all these staph and, and uh, recipulous infections on her face. Because every time it was, it was cold, she was doing this, and she was uh, implanting staph on, on her face. And another gentleman who worked at the Nugget uh, kept doing all this, and he kept getting these, these uh, severe staph infections all over his body. So um, I think you're right. I think the, the jail is a new facility, and if somebody brings a spider into the jail, now I don't know what the intake is, but there you leave all their dirty clothes and all their other stuff outside, and they give them a, a clean uniform. So it's pretty, you know, most of that stuff's pretty hard to, to get through there. So it's a very clean facility. Uh, uh, the deputies do a good job out there, and I know the sheriff Worley is uh, dedicated to making that a a uh, very very uh, uh, good uh, work environment for the deputies. Mm -hmm. and as decent a place as if you're ever gonna yeah. have a decent place to be incarcerated. Yeah, yeah, yeah unfortunately. Um, and then um, 
so, but I, Ray, I, I, if you're still on there, I, I think that probably if you're on the phone or listening, I, I believe that it probably was more likely a methicillin resistant, like they actually could catch the spider. But I think the one spider that looks like the brown recluse out here isn't as bad as far as a bite. But if anybody else knows anything different, you're free to call in um, and, and let me know that. I'm certainly concerned about black widows. I mean, they're everywhere in this town um, and they're quite uh, nasty. But uh, then again, if you do get bit by black widow, I think they have the uh, anti-venom. And that's not really a deadly spider. Uh, that will cause abdominal cramping, nausea, and make you feel like uh, you wish you were gonna die, but uh, you probably will not die from a black widow bite. Um, I have to bring this picture up. I have, um, and I have it actually, if I took it in my house, I actually have a black widow who, for some reason, a mouse was jumping and got caught in the web, and the black widow uh, did kill uh, the mouse. So uh, their venom is obviously uh, enough to uh, do some damage. But one of the things you mentioned, and I wanted to reiterate, was this rule of medicine that I have, and it's called the first rule of medicine is, if you listen to the patient long enough, they're gonna tell you what's wrong. And if you listen to the patient even longer, they're probably gonna tell you how to make them better. So what your, your, your theory of, of being that independent doctor where you can listen to the people and you don't feel like you have to see so many people during the day um, is a great uh, advantage to seeking out independent practitioners where they're not trying to cram in large numbers or in clinics that are overly crowded uh, where you see different providers all the time. One of the things that's very I like about my practice and I think you'll like about your practice is once you establish with a patient, you want to continue to be able to see that patient. Once they're comfortable with you, they want to be able to continue to see you. And changing doctors is almost like changing wives. This just doesn't feel good all the time uh, to be able to do that. So I think it's very important that if you you know, have that good relationship with it, yes, you can make it work with somebody else, but that doesn't mean uh, that you would want to do that. Would you agree? I absolutely agree. Yeah. So, um, and I think that that's one of the advantages that we can offer uh, uh, to do that. Um, okay, so I think we have Lewis on the phone. Lewis? Uh, uh, yeah. um, okay, so I think we have Lewis on the phone. Lewis? Uh, yes, sir. How are you doing tonight? I uh, had a hip transplant, and the doctor told me, I'm going to be in for a lot of trouble. He had to stretch my sciatic nerve, and I'm having pain now for, uh, it's been eight months since the operation, and he said, give it a year and a half before you even start picking on it. Anyway, I have been getting hydrocodone and Tylenol from healthcare uh, partners for the past couple years. And and uh, I just had a, uh, a CT scan and uh, had to see a urologist because so the pain from the leg come up into my back where I assumed uh, right where my kidney is. And anyway, I got a notification to go to pain management center, and I went there today. And he's going to give me something to kill the nerves, and then come back in four weeks. And hey, Lewis, go to physical therapy. Well, there's no physical therapy on this planet that can tell me what to do any more than what I have been doing every day. Hey, Lewis, you need to turn your... Anyway. Lewis, turn your TV down, and then you won't have the feedback, and that way you're, you will be able to hear yourself in the phone. We're on a seven-second delay. Okay, how's this? Okay, I uh, I seen your program where you were talking about painkillers. Yes, sir. And come, for some reason, I I do not like this Tylenol because 
liver damage and everything. And if there's a medication without it, I seen your special on pain man on pain pills. And you said that one that's not being used, that it's one of the best, is uh, methadone. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm simply going to stop babbling here and ask simply... Would it be a good idea to ask my pain management doctor to, to, to try methadone. Okay, so I have a few minutes left, and, and, and um, let me just briefly, uh, sciatica or nerve pain, neuropathic pain, is very, it can be treated with methadone. It can be treated with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, medicines also. Uh, a lot goes into that decision making. It is not an, an overnight decision. Methadone is a very, very good and, and uh, pain medication has to be used in the right context. And if you find your doses of hydrocodone accelerating, um, then that certainly is, a, is an alternative. Uh, they also make hydrocodone without Tylenol. There's a new two new products on the market that have that. You might want to discuss that, but those insurances usually don't cover that. So I don't know how much you take during the day. I don't know how well your pain is relieved with it. Um, you're right about physical therapy, but conditioning and, and you may be limited by certain things and anything you can do to get non-opioid based pain relief would be in your favor and using your opioids as a last resort for pain. And also Tylenol toxicity is really over 3,000 milligrams to 4,000 milligrams a day. So at 10 milligrams of hydrocodone, you could take nine and probably still be safe. Uh, Long-term use of any analgesics are difficult on your kidneys. Um, so I'm not sure who your pain management doctor is, but I would entertain that discussion with them uh, and they can advise you on the benefits of, of using uh, methadone uh, uh, as opposed to just sticking with, with hydrocodone. But I think you're in the right direction looking at something without Tylenol if you're increasing your hydrocodone dosage and looking at other modalities, right? Uh, yeah, Lewis, uh, I might add that there is a third class of medicines that, that we use extensively and so does pain management. The uh, medicines that were first developed. Uh, we got to go. We're gonna. We're gonna cut off. But table that discussion, Lewis. We got to go for the night. But uh, Mike uh, again, seven five one six one one. If you want to see Jonak, and he'll discuss that third medicine with you. Good night, Perant. Thank you for tuning in.